everybody, I'm meteorologist Gavin Sandell. The Perseid meteor shower peaks around this time and it's one of the most anticipated astronomical events featuring meteors raining from the sky. How does this happen and most importantly, will the weather cooperate during this time? Let's dig in and in the northern sky during the summertime, you'll get to see a constellation called Perseus hence the name from the Perseid meteor shower. And when you look towards the northern sky during the summertime, you might see meteors that are raining from the sky. And this is actually debris from a comet called the Swift Tuttle Comet. And it was discovered in the 1860s. And just like how we orbit the sun, the Swift Tuttle Comet also orbits around the sun. And during the months of July and August, that's when we interfere with the debris of the Swift Tuttle Comet and get into the Perseid meteor shower. That's the basis of the Perseid meteor shower. So I was giving you a lot of astronomical terms there, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a crash course of what it is. So a meteor is what I've been talking about, and it's not the rock, it's the light emitted from a meteoroid, which is itself a small asteroid, which is a rocky or icy debris flying through space. So when meteors get really, really bright, we call that fireball meteors, and that's just considered a brighter meteor than the planet Venus. And then typically the most important ones, especially in our society, when they go towards Earth, that's what we call meteorites. The last time that happened was in 2013. So now there's something that is similar to fireworks and you might see in the sky, you might see white meteors, you might see yellow meteors, and they actually have a chemical composition to them. Uh, just like fireworks, they can come from different colors. So if you see, for example, a red meteor, they are typically formed from nitrogen and oxygen. And if you see a yellow one, then you can decipher that that's from iron. And so there's different uh, ways that you can get different colored meteors, which is pretty cool, and the basis of how we get our person meteor shower. So now let's talk about the weather, what the weather is going to look like for this event. Cloud-wise, we're going to be okay after rain moves out of the area Wednesday afternoon. You could tell in the future cast, though, a little something starts to bubble up a little there at the midnight hours, a little bit past midnight. And it's not clouds, but fog, very low-level clouds moving through. So once we get towards 2, 3, 4 a.m., it is going to be very, very challenging in order to see any of the meteors uh, coming through the Perseid meteor shower. But it's not just the fog that's going to impact it. It's the moon as well. And that's because the moon just was full from the Sturgeon moon on August 9th. So the moon actually acts as a little bit of an inhibitor. Uh, you're talking about light pollution. So on a clear night like this, it's going to look great. But tonight you're seeing a lot of fog and the impacts of the moon. So instead of the typical 50 to 75 per hour that we see on a clear day, I think at the peak between 12 and 2 a.m., we're only really gonna be seeing five to 10 per hour that are going to be just getting through the brightness of the moon. So uh, typically in visibility, it's not going to be a very, very good night here, but I wanna talk about some good news though. And remember that the shower only peaks around this time and it could still be seen throughout the rest of the month. So with dwindling moonlight, once we get to the later stages of the month and clearing skies into the weekend, there will be some good nights ahead. Well, for Weather 101, I'm Gavin Sandell.